Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Surrounded by plants, ready to put together this kind of tropical themed fall planter. And yeah, use air quotes because it's like a fall planter, but really only because I'm gonna try and use colors that are fall themed. So I'm gonna dive in here. It's slim pickings where I am this time of year. That's something you're gonna kind of get used to me saying probably it's not, the nurseries just don't have a ton in the way of tropicals, but uh, I thought I'd go ahead, put things together with what I have and then can talk about the various other options. And there are a lot of options, a lot of different ways to go here. So I'm gonna start off here with this elephant ear. This is the painted black gecko. It's gonna be really pretty in the background, add a lot of contrast to everything. And just to the side to that, just out of habit, I'm gonna go ahead and put an Asclepius. This is the Carasavaca. I like to have those in all my planters. I've been saying that like pretty much all summer, I think. And then a Persian shield, looking a little bit haggard. You know, like I said, it's the end of the season. So sometimes things aren't always looking that hot, but it'll bounce back to a lot better now that it's in a bigger pot. Do a Croton, really nice, bright, what I consider be tropical colors, but they also lean themselves very well towards fall. Oh, and I have this ornamental millet here. Nice dark colors. It looks like corn. Anther and Thea. More pretty purple colors. Bold fall foliage. Let's throw a Hemelia patens in here. It's got some good color on it. I think this is one of the variegated varieties. Maybe a sweet potato vine over the front. I think that would look nice. Okay, and then I also added an Acolius and a few other plants. We'll talk about it. Oh, and I changed the pot because that little, the, the barrel just wasn't big enough and I forgot I needed it for something else. It's just one of those things because I actually just mixed up my planters. That's all. I forgot I wanted to do this one in the urn. Some of you may remember this urn from my garbage planter video and that just seemed like the most fitting thing to use for this one. Usually this goes in between my garage doors, which is also where my dumpsters go. So uh, I call it my garbage planter, partially because it sits near my dumpsters and because I usually in the late summer, early fall, fill it with clearance plants that just kind of look like garbage. They end up filling out and doing just fine within a few weeks. From the get, it doesn't look that good. And um, you know, up close, looking up here, it doesn't look so bad. But um, <laughs> you know, when you bag things out a little bit, sometimes it's like, uh... <laughs> nope. Some of the plants that are in here are just scrappy clearance plants or just kind of scraggly because that's what I could get a hold of. And I did add a few things into this. Um, I'll go through, talk about everything and then talk about just other plants I think would be fantastic to use for a tropical type planter that's maybe fall themed. It's kind of what I was going for here. But uh, just things I couldn't get a hold of. You know, there, I'm, I'm up in St. Louis. I don't have an access to a ton of plants this time of year period other than like mums, kales and cabbage and pansies and things like that. So. It's kind of working with what I got. <laughs> For starters, in the back, facing away from the camera, it's a painted black gecko, Kalakaja. <laughs> That's better. Might want to see what I'm actually talking about. I like the painted black gecko, Kalakaja, a lot. I prefer the black coral, Kalakaja. The painted black gecko, just my experience growing it, tends to be a little bit more leggy and kind of sad looking sometimes. There's smaller leaves on them and I don't know, I prefer the black coral, but the painted black echo is pretty much the only thing I could find this year that had the dark, dark foliage, other than like, I have some alakajas that would have worked, but this planter is going in full sun, so I didn't, really don't want to use an alakaj in here. So that's the painted black gecko. Good zone 7B and up, so like 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, about as cold as they want to go. Sun to part sun, gonna have a more stout and full plant and full sun, it's gonna be a little bit more stretched out and leggy with less sun, because it's gonna reach a little bit. But they can take less light than full sun. And they get 36 to 48 inches high. The description says lush foliage. Never been my experience with them, but maybe it's just where I'm getting them from. I don't know. You guys let me know if you get really nice, really full plants with your painted black geckos. I don't normally, but like I said, maybe it's just uh, where I'm getting them from, because that happens sometimes. I know I used to get my Thai Giants from a place where they never got very big versus when I got them virtually anywhere else, they got gigantic and did exactly what they were supposed to do. So there can be variations with where plants are produced and how they're grown. This is going to be getting a lot of sun where I'm putting it. Like I said, it's going to be between my garage doors and I'm going to want things more on the moist side, which is fine. I'm going to have this entire thing set up on drips. So I'm not really going to have to worry about that too much. And I'll make sure when I have a planter where there are some plants that maybe like things more wet that 
and there are other plants that want things a little bit more dry, then I'll make sure to put the dripper directly over that plant that wants the water and then have the other dripper set a little bit further away from the others. That'll make more sense when I get to the other plants. And then, okay, right next to this, this is a, not the ridiculous, this is a Spitfire coleus. I didn't actually plant this one in here. It's just sitting there. I'm not trying to trick y'all. I'm just letting you know. It's just sitting there and chilling. It's back there right behind that pretty millet. Has really pretty red foliage with a nice green outline on it. That's one of the plants that was in my video on where I was just going through like a list of plants that I really like for fall planters. This is one of them. It's just a pretty coleus, but I couldn't decide if I wanted to put it in here or not. I think I'm going to, I just, I have two other fall planters I'm working on. So I wanted to decide if I wanted this one in here with another one. That's why it's just sitting there. But the Spitfire coleus. It's the sun to shade coleus, as are most of them. Spitfire coleus is an annual except in zones 10 and up, or 10 and 11B is what the tag says specifically. They can go full sun to uh, shade. I think they're going to have the most color if you keep them more into the part shade area. Colors vary a lot with coleus depending on how much sun they get. It gets 18 to 24 inches high. I really like the Spitfire coleus. I think coleus are a nice option for doing tropical type planters because well, y'all who live someplace where you have much warmer fall temperatures and I mean your fall is basically our late summer, you can keep these going a lot longer. So even though coleus is seen in like virtually all zones as an annual, it can be grown as a perennial in zones 10 and up, which is nice, especially for doing things like fall containers. You get a splash of color, it's got some foliage on it. I like to make sure to snap the flowers off of them to keep them nice and bushy. If you're growing as a perennial, you'll probably need to give them cutbacks, like probably every like three to five months, I would think. Like cut them in half, keep them full and bushy. They're just nice. They bring out a lot of color when they're thrown into a fall planter. It's one of the reasons I really like them, particularly the Spitfire. Now, I used the Ridiculous, red Ridiculous, in one of my other fall videos that should be out by now, I think. Either way, it was in the Plants for Fall Gardening video. And I liked this one more for this tropical themed one because even though this is like a tropical type planter, my goal here was more to feature plants that can be grown in more tropical areas. Not necessarily have a tropical aesthetic, like it doesn't have to be full of tropical plants. Just want it to look fallish. And you get that with these really pretty leaves on this coleus, the Spitfire coleus. The leaves to me resemble, like it's not like an oak or a maple, but it's kind of in there. It's not just a round leaf. You know what I'm saying? It has nice fall texture. There we go. That's the longest way of explaining that ever. Okay, and now in my opinion, I think this is one of my favorite plants to put into a fall planter that's gonna be suitable for warmer growing zones. This is an ornamental millet. The variety is called Purple Baron, which is a Penicetum Glockum. Hardy to zones 9, 10 up, somewhere in there. I get mixed results when I Google that one. Some of them even say zone 7. With this one in particular, I'm mostly seeing zones 9 and 10, but if you live in zone 7 and it's a perennial for you, that's great, let me know. It's a full sun grass. It gets 36 to 40 inches tall. It has a really nice upright growth habit to it, and it has, like the name suggests, Purple Baron. It's a really pretty darkish purple, almost chocolatey colored foliage as that gets taller. The millet aspect of it, those seed heads that come up, they remind me of corn, which I think is adorable, but it's not. It's millet, a nice fall texture, just like the coleus, nice color contrast. And uh, the foliage on them almost has like a corn kind of appearance to it, which is neat. A lot of fall planters are, have uh, penicetums in them, just like the, what is it, rubrum, you know, like just the red fountain grass, which is also an option, I think, for zones nine and up. It's an option as an annual everywhere. But as far as a plant that's going to give a little bit more longevity in a warmer growing zone, the penicetums are really nice for that. But this millet right here, that's just kind of a nice alternative. Like I said, the growth habit's just different. I think that that corn stalk looking foliage on them looks really cool. So that's the millet, it's really pretty. That's gonna look very nice as it fills out. And I know this is a lot for the planter. As always, I always say these are very full, but for me, these only have like maybe five to six weeks of growth in them. But if you live someplace where you will be able to grow it outdoors much, much, much longer and you have a longer growing season, then you, know, you might want to go with either a very large pot or you can keep it a little bit lighter. I wanted to cram as many options in here to show everybody as possible. Oh, and it's hard to see, but there is the Persian shield in here, which is the uh, oh, Stribolanthes dirianus. There's not much to look at with it yet, but there is one directly behind it that just looks stunning. So there's a little bit of a reference for you if you kind of wanted a better idea of how that's going to fill out and look. The Blanthes are hardy down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit. They get 24 to 36 inches tall. And kind of depending on your climate, it'll go full sun to shade. The more intense and drier weather, the more shade it needs. 
the more wet and humid, but maybe still warm, the more sun it can take. I personally like to grow them in part sun. That seems to be like the happy place for them. But if things get too dry, sometimes they'll crisp up a little bit, which is, um, sorry, screaming children kind of startled me. This application, they'll be just fine. They'll blend with everything. They'll do great. Persian shields are wonderful, again, because of the texture. They have a very nice reflective nature to them. In fact, it's getting a little bit dark at me. If I turn my lights on, we'll see some reflection. Let me check. Kind of. They have a really pretty vibrant foliage on them that has variation within the veining. There's some green, some purple, uh, kind of a silvery hue to everything. They're just beautiful plants. They're one of my favorites actually for like tropical applications or to grow as an annual. I absolutely love Persian Shield. Especially for like a Halloween themed planter, you get a nice burst of purple which mixes well with greens and oranges. They're fantastic. I love a Persian Shield. Okay, and then here's one of those scraggly plants. I had two options at the store, okay? They had little bitty orange sun impatience for like 87 cents on clearance, or they had some that were in hanging baskets for $17. Now, here, what did I, no, I'm sorry. I can't spend $17 on that. It's too late in the year. I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I only got like six weeks of growing left in them. So I put this little guy in here, but it's okay because this is the compact hot coral sun impatient. And what was that compact hot coral sun impatient with the Persian shield right behind it. So you still get an idea of what that's going to look like. I just figured I'll just show them one of my big ones. You know, one of the expectations versus reality. Well, 87 cents, right? But this is what it'll get to look like. The compact sun impatience don't usually get any bigger than 24 inches. They tend to have a more domed shape to them. So like, you know, a dome instead of being more upright. And sun impatience, one of the things I love about a sun impatient is that they can take more cold than like your typical impatient. They're not necessarily cold hardy, but you should be able to grow these, I would think as a perennial in warmer zones nine and up. You might have to mulch them. There might be some frost dieback, something like that. But I think they should be okay because they, where I live, they don't usually die back fully until we drop to like 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas my regular impatience, like the slightest frost, they're just the, done. These keep going a little bit longer or quite a bit longer. I usually get about maybe a month more growth out of them than I do my other impatience. So just imagine like really pretty vibrant orange beautifulness right there in the center of everything, which will be right next to the croton. Croton, they are fantastic, aren't they? A great plant to use in fall planters. Again, the foliage adds texture. It's usually glossy, which is nice. It's beautiful. This particular one is very, very yellow. Usually, you know, they have a little bit more greens and reds and things in them. They're, they're different varieties that can affect the type of irrigation you get. In fact, with lighting that can have a lot to do with it too. So I don't know what the case is going to be. This one over here has a little bit more color in it. You can see there's another croton. I really like crotons. I have a lot of them. One right behind it, that variety is called Mr. Fre or no, it's just called Freckles. I've been calling him Mr. Freckles. But the point being, crotons, even though to me they give off a wonderful tropical aesthetic, there's still something very fallish about them. I think it's the combinations of the oranges and the yellows that you get in the foliage. That they're a pretty good option. Crotons should be fully hardy zones, I would say 9B and up. There might be some dieback with frost and whatnot, but they'll go a pretty long time for you, even if you're in zone 9. I mean, you'll get a lot of growth out of them. You'll get a lot of time with them before the cold takes them back, which is nice. Whereas where I live, I have to pull those crotons probably come, I'd say, mid to late October. That's when temperatures start to usually start to dip into the 30s sometimes at nighttime. They don't really like that, but they can take some frost. They'll defoliate and usually come back from it, but just not very much. They're tender. Oh, there is a scraggly little Hamelia patens in here, a firecracker plant. I just tossed it in here. It was a variety called Firefly, and I was like, I didn't end up doing what I wanted to do with it this year, so like, I'll just put it in there. There'll be updates in probably the October garden tour of that one. We'll talk about that then. There's not much to say that. You can't even see it. Oh, zinnias. There's a teeny tiny little bitty zinnia back here. It doesn't have a variety name. It's just an orange zinnia. It was super cheap from the hardware store. And uh, they're fine in warmer climates. The, you got to kind of watch out. You have a lot of heavy rain. Sometimes there can be issues with rot. But otherwise, they're easy to grow. A lot of them have nice fall colors and a nice fall sort of shape to the flower which is fantastic. Portulaca, I love Portulaca. Part in the cicadas, they just keep getting louder and louder and louder, I'm so sorry. Now where I live, Portulaca is normally grown as an annual, but it is a perennial if you live, I believe zones nine and up. I'll, I'll have it like down at the bottom of the screen to like double check those things just to be certain. For me, they reseed every year, which is really nice. I mean, they don't always come back, but typically they'll reseed. Still an annual, but if you live someplace where you have nice mild winters, it'll keep going for you. 
I have noticed they're one of those types of succulents where the hotter the climate, the kind of the less sun they want. So if it's, you know, really scorching hot, 100 degree Fahrenheit weather, then might be good to give them a little bit less sun when things are really intense in the afternoon. So it's like a morning sun type of succulent. But they can usually take stronger irrigation, a little bit more water than some of the other succulents can, which is nice. And then they flower very profusely. With just the standard portulacas, I do tend to give my cut back when they start to look a little bit scraggly. I'll come back like probably 50% cut back every couple months during the summertime. This one probably won't get much of a cut back this year though. It's just kind of too late for that. I don't think it'll do enough growing for it to need a cut back where I live with what, the amount of time that's left until fall. And trailing over the front, there are tons of trailers to choose from. I've been holding on to this one for this planter all summer. And the snails got to it. There's some holes in the leaves, but look at how cool the foliage is on there. This sweet potato vine is called Sweet Georgia Bullfrog. It's a really pretty kind of chocolatey foliage with some red in there and lots of green speckling. I like that because for a fall planter, I usually like to have a trailer that has a little bit of color and texture to it, which getting a lot of that with the sweet Georgia bullfrog. They like full sun. They get six to eight inches tall, so not super bushy. I have planted some sweet potato vines that get very, very, very bushy. This one doesn't get as big and bushy. It says 24 inches wide. Now, I don't know. My experience with a lot of sweet potato vines is their growth is somewhat indeterminate. Like it'll just keep on going. I don't know. If you live someplace tropical where this will potentially become invasive, don't let it trail down to the ground. Keep it cut. Keep it up in the pot so that it can't take off and go all over the place. The reason I'm happy that I use this in here, but I was a little bit concerned was I was like, you know, that might blend in with this pot too much, but the specks of green and the variation between the reds and those kind of chocolatey hues, I think still has a nice contrast against the black of the pot. So it works well. I had debated using a um, lemon coral sedum, which isn't going to trail very far, but has a really beautiful green foliage to it. A really nice green foliage that I think would have looked great against the black of the pot, but I kind of need to hold on to the ones I have left for some other planters, so stuck with this one. There are tons of options for fall planters that you can grow in a tropical climate. There are varieties of the Cordelin fruticosas that have a darker foliage that'll kind of give you that cornstalk appearance. Those are really neat. Um, the Enset Morelliis, the red obsidian bananas, I think those would look amazing. That bright, vibrant red foliage with a whole bunch of annuals planted around it in a large container. Like that would just look stunning. Like I could list off plants suitable for something like this for a very long time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give me a minute. I need to think about whether or not I wanna do that or not. Okay, let's list some things off. Now I really, really ultimately wanted to do this with either an orange or a yellow hibiscus in the middle. I just couldn't find any that were in flower or like were even close to flowering. So, so that didn't work out. That's why I went with the Sun Impatient. I think the Sun Impatient might be a little bit of a better idea anyway, just like price wise and longevity with the frost coming up for me. But if you live someplace where you still got a lot of growing time left, hibiscus, fantastic. Orange, yellow, there are even brown hibiscus varieties out there if you want brown flowers that's an option you can find them oh chrysandra that's a beautiful plant has nice creamy orange flowers on them pakistaki's lutea which is like kind of like a justicia they have really tall yellow flowers on them they're really pretty there are ligularias that have nice dark foliage on them and really big bold foliage those would be stunning I'd love to use those in a fall container. Actually, why didn't I do that? Oh, because because <laughs> they're like 30 bucks a plant. Never mind. Really, okay, the thing is with the fall planter, if you live someplace really warm and a lot of the cool type fall growing plants aren't an option, if you have a centerpiece, something like this ornamental millet, which is getting very hard to see, but if you have something grassy in texture in the planter and you stick to reds, oranges, and yellows, and like shades of browns and greens, basically just avoid pink and purple and you're good. That's pretty much what fall planters are is having something with texture and some movement in the middle because it tends to resemble like dried fields and the harvest. That's what we think of with fall, right? The harvest. <laughs> so to represent that, I just went in and threw everything together in one pot for you. How do you like it? It's gonna need time. It'll fill out. It'll be fine. I mostly just wanted to throw something together so we could kind of talk about options for people who don't live someplace where they can grow things like pansies and kale and mums and whatnot. And like I said, zinnias, great option if you're trying to substitute for mums. 
There, there really are a lot of options, but as you can tell, the sun's kind of going. It's setting back there in the distance behind my very thirsty jalapeno. Comment down below with plants you guys like to use, or really all the suggestions you have for the people who do live in those warmer climates where they're not using the typical like fall type plants that everyone else is using. That list just goes on and on and on. There are some plants that are staples in a lot of fall containers. That's coleus, which you can grow in the warmer climates. So that'll do great for you. Fountain grasses, also a staple in fall planters. This millet, fantastic in fall planters. Crotons, also great in fall planters. And since y'all have the option in your warmer climates, why not do a sun impatient? They're bright, happy, cheery, and they come in orange. And actually, the hot coral's more of a pinkish orange, but like there's one that's called like electric orange or maybe it's just sun patience orange, I can't remember. It's like a burnt orange, which would be great for fall. Especially when you combine it with plants with dark foliage on them, like something like a sweet potato vine, maybe one that hasn't been eaten alive by snails. Again, the black coral elephant ears, Persian shields, all lots of options. I hope that didn't make anybody dizzy. I'm so sorry. Using a tripod, take your hands off the camera. All right, I hope everybody's doing well. There'll be updates with this planter when I place it and whatnot. And what I decide to do with that coleus, that'll probably be in the next vlog that comes out, something like that. Or it'll be up on my Instagram, best place to follow me. All my social media is linked down below in the description of the video. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, you can give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. It makes a big difference for the videos in the channel, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I'll upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.